YouTube, what's happening? Today we're going to talk about something that's not necessarily very exciting, but every financial plan should have this as a consideration. It's called a plan Z, and that plan Z is something called insurance. In this series, we are going to cover four types of insurances, being life insurance, total permanent disability, also known as TPD, trauma, also known as critical illness, and income protection. YouTube, let's talk about life insurance. Although morbid, it's probably something that you need to consider. Now, life insurance is extremely simple. Life insurance pays your beneficiaries when you die. Who are your beneficiaries? Those are the people that you want to leave the money behind for. Now, why do people take out life insurance in the first place? It's usually because they purchase a home and they want to protect the debt. They might have children and they want to ensure that if something happens to them, the children are looked after. And sometimes people just want to leave a legacy. Everyone has their own reasons. Now, how is the price of your life insurance determined? Well, there are multiple factors. Obviously, the more cover you want, the more expensive. But it's usually based on your age, your occupation, your gender, and sometimes your health may also play a factor on how much you pay for the cover as the insurer might decide to actually increase your premiums if you want to cover a pre-existing condition. A pre-existing condition is something that you might already have prior to applying for the insurance. For example, maybe you've had cancer in the past, diabetes, or it could be something as little as a sore back. So more often than not, people realize that they have life insurance inside superannuation and this is what gets them thinking. Now, if you do have life insurance inside superannuation, please understand that the life insurance that you buy outside of superannuation could potentially be very different. One type of life insurance is something called default life insurance. Default is usually seen when people open superannuation funds. For example, you open a new superannuation fund, there's a contribution made into that super fund by your employer, and that triggers something called default cover. With default cover, you usually don't really get a choice of how much cover you have. It's usually based on your age, your income, and so on. The other type of life insurance is called general life insurance. And to be completely honest, this stuff is completely shit. This is when you call up and you say, hey, I need a million dollars worth of life cover. And they say, no worries, are you a smoker or not? And you say, yeah, no. And then they just give you a premium. Now, the issue with this insurance is it is underwritten at the point of claim. Now, this is very important. What does underwriting mean? Underwriting is when an insurer decides whether they're going to cover you or not based on your health, based on your income and so on. Now, the problem with general insurance cover is they make this decision at the point of claim. So what can happen is if you have pre-existing conditions, if you've had cancer in the past or you have diabetes or you have mental health issues or anything like that, if you've taken this cover, what could happen is at the point of claim, the insurer could decline you for life cover payments due to your pre-existing condition. Now, believe it or not, the insurer can actually decide that throughout you paying the premiums throughout your whole life, at claim time, they'll go, wait, actually you had something wrong with you. You had a pre-existing condition and we're not covering you. And that could be a big risk when taking out general insurance cover. Another way of taking out insurance is to take out fully underwritten cover. Usually, Fully underwritten policies, one, have better benefits, features. They also protect you no matter what. But more often than not, they're actually not necessarily more expensive than default and general cover. They might just be a little bit harder to take up in the first place. Now, let me explain. What happens is when you're taking out fully underwritten cover, you might have to do a medical. You might have to provide your financials, but the insurer at, at that point in time decides whether they're going to cover you or not. They'll tell you what the terms are based on, for example, your health. So for example, if you have had mental issues or you have had cancer, what they could do is potentially exclude that cover or maybe charge you a little bit more, but then you are protected. But the good thing about fully underwritten cover is once you're protected, as long as you pay your premiums, no matter what happens to you, no matter what changes in your life, you are always protected as that person that took out the cover from day one. So why is this all really important? Firstly, as mentioned, you might already have insurance inside your superannuation. And with that insurance, the numbers might not make sense. 
It might not be covering you appropriately, or you might not even need life insurance. Maybe you need income protection. You might not need total permanent disability. Maybe you need life insurance, or you might not have access to something like critical illness, which is only available outside of superannuation. So step one, check if you have insurances in the first place. Step two, identify how much insurance you need and what cover you need to protect yourself, your goals, and your future plans. And step three from there, find a product that's suitable for you based on your medical and financial circumstances. Now, how can you pay for your life insurance? Number one, you can pay for it via superannuation. More often than not, this is where we usually see insurance funded. Now, there are many reasons for this. One really important thing to understand is just because you're with a super fund, doesn't mean that you have to have their insurance. If you are with Cup Super, you can have pen insurance inside Cup Super. So you can actually go out and find insurance that suits you and a product that suits you based on the benefits, the pricing and features, and then fund that insurance via your superannuation. Now, why would you want to fund your super via superannuation? One, you might not want to reach into your pocket and pay for it out of your pocket. However, please keep in mind that your super is your money. The main reason is life insurance is not tax deductible. However, when life insurance is funded inside superannuation, you get a 15% tax deduction. So essentially, when funding life insurance via super, you get a 15% discount. Please note, if you are going to do this, you should potentially consider maybe making additional contributions to cover that cost and so on, completely up to you. So life insurance is extremely unique in this example because with life insurance, whether it's funded via superannuation or whether it's funded out of your pocket, now we're talking about fully underwritten cover, not general or default cover, there is no difference in features and benefits. The policies are identical. If the features and benefits are the same, and you get a 15% deduction inside super. So why would you fund insurance out of pocket? So the main things you wanna look out for when it comes to life insurance is a life cover C's age. So with default or policies funded directly via your superannuation product, what you'll see is these usually have a life cover C's age of 65 to 70. Now, I don't know about you, but you're probably planning on living past 65 or 70. So what ends up happening is you pay for all, all, all these insurers throughout your whole life and then you lose the cover. So what you want to do is you want to try to get something with an almost unlimited life cover C's age. A lot of fully underwritten policies will actually cover you all the way up to 100 plus. Once again, as long as you pay the premium, they'll always cover you. The second thing to consider when reviewing your life insurance is renewability. What you're looking for is guaranteed renewability. This means that the insurance provider can't just cancel the cover on you. And some insurers can actually do that. They can go, uh, we're not covering bricklayers anymore. Uh, you know what? We actually don't cover females anymore. So your insurance is gone. Now, if you're getting a fully underwritten policy, it will have something called guaranteed renewability. So what will happen is even for example, if that company decides to shut down or anything like that, there are contracts and clauses to pass that on to a reinsurer or a different insurer to continue protecting you under the terms that you signed up on. So how do you decide how much life insurance you have? Well, this one's a hard one. So what we're going to do is we're going to include a life insurance calculator to help you determine how you should cover yourself. Now I can provide you examples, but life insurance is always specific to individuals, goals, needs, objectives, and everyone's different. Some people want to only protect their home. Some people also want to protect their investment properties. Some people want to ensure that their children have millions of dollars if they pass away. What's right for someone else might not be right for you. What you need to ensure is that the cover fits you, your goals, your lifestyle. You need to ensure that it protects you, your family, and also anything you want protected if something was to happen to you. So when it comes to life insurance, we know that your superannuation offers default cover. You can call a hotline that will give you some sort of cover, but the best way is usually to get professional advice. Professionals don't charge for insurance advice because they're paid a brokerage from the insurer. This doesn't necessarily mean that the insurance is going to be more expensive for you as well. And if you want us to help you, we'll leave a link in the description to help you find the best life cover to suit your goals, needs, and objectives.